fellow heathens, it's Liz again for part two of decks I'm getting to know. So I pulled out like pretty much the rest of my decks and I have a feeling there's going to be a third part to this. Um, a lot of these decks are just going to be like shown just by themselves because I really don't have like a category for them. But before we get started, can I just point out this new table? so smooth I love it it's a, a new table we you know we've been kind of doing a lot of home renovation stuff lately so these are hard work in hands uh, we had our carpet replaced yesterday and that's been um, that was quite a chore to kind of get everything up off the ground on the second floor but it was so worth it but that's a side note so let's get started okay so here we have five Marseille and Marseille type decks this one is the Pablo Robledo Tarot de Marseilla or Marcella. This is the Hodorowski Tarot. This is the CBD Marseille. Th these two are Marseille, but I think this one's called the Hodorowski Marseille or Hodorowski <clears throat> excuse me, Tarot. Uh, this one is the Spanish Tarot, which is also a Marseille. And this one is the Triunfi de la Luna, which is the Marseille type. So I want to show you the boxes for these two. I recently got this one in maybe like a week or so ago and this is the sixth edition and it's a really nice sturdy box. It was awarded the historical deck of the year in 2013 by Tarot Association. Here's the back or the yeah the bottom of the box and this one doesn't have any thumb cut out so like right now it's without the deck being in it. Oh no, it um, doesn't want to come out of here. Here we go. Okay, so, and it comes with a beautiful uh, green ribbon and a little white book, which his previous iterations didn't come with. So it has a little bit of Pablo's um, thoughts on Marseille and some of the symbolism, and it also is, if you turn it around, it's in Spanish as well. And since I just got it in, it's definitely something I wanted to include in decks I'm getting to know. The Triumphe de la Luna is not a deck new to my collection. I've had it for a little over a year, I believe. And this is from Patrick Valenza, who's also the creator of the Deviant Moon Tarot, which I do not own. So let's get into these. I also wanted to kind of point out the fact that this is not an extensive, my extensive Marseille collection. I have two more, which I've already shown. This is the uh, Hess 1750 Marseille from Germany. And this is the Tarot de Ozarks, which is from Printer Studio, I believe. And let me just show you this real quick. This is also a sturdy box. It, um, comes out easily, like the top comes off pretty easily. This was not a cheap deck. It's beautiful art paper um, it's from 1750, a reproduction obviously. And this one I mentioned that I don't actually work with it. I, I pull it out when I wanna kind of see those smiling faces and it gives me a little positive energy boost. So that all of the people pretty much are smiling and I really enjoy that. So there's that one. And really quickly, the Tarot de Ozarks is printed on, here's the backs, printed on premium smooth paper or cardstock. I really, really do enjoy it. It's got a slight sheen. I do enjoy this cardstock a lot. It's very, sturdy and it almost has it's not quite I don't know it's just got a really nice feel to it and this one I had mentioned several in a couple of videos um, because I love the colors and I love how you can kind of pull that in and draw that in this is a Marseille type deck it's not really based on Marseille and so I have this one and I and I love this one as well so I just wanted to make mention that I have um, these other two beyond these five. Now, 
I am in the process of studying these two decks. I, because of this, because of like the home renovation stuff that's been going on and these videos that I've been doing, I really haven't been able to sit down and really study these two decks side by side. I also mentioned it before, I have the CBD, the Tarot, the Marseille Tarot Revealed by Yoav Van Dov, and this is the deck that goes with this. So this one is more traditional as far as its symbolism. It tried to stay as close to, um, you know, ancient Marseille decks and what they could draw from that regarding symbolism as possible. And I really do enjoy the, this section here that talks about the minors because I, I pretty much have the, the majors down. You know, it's the minors in Marseille that can get a little tricky. And I also have the Harowski book, The Way of Tarot, and this one is a chunk of monk. And this one talks about Marseille in general. It talks about his, his unique vision regarding um, Marseille and here's the star so it kind of like breaks off the suits and it kind of gives you a different perspective. Uh, I love that it talks about the symbolism. Let's see if I can, oh yeah, so if you can see that it pulls apart like the different symbolism that you'll see like in the High Priestess there's an egg which is not in the CBD because that was something that Harowski decided to put in there and a lot of people have issues with his deck because of his inclusion of some elements and they were not really visible in some of the other um, you know historical Marseille decks so he kind of like went his own way and people really didn't like that because he claimed that it was like the one true Marseille that being said, I have to say there is something about it that, that there's an energy about it that is striking and I'm looking forward to kind of diving deeper into that. But the reason why I have the CBD is all, obviously I wanted to kind of look at the look at the differences and eventually I, I may do a video comparing those. But I also have these other ones that appeal to me in different ways. So let's take a look. So the Pablo Robledo Marseille has been a favorite among people who collect Marseille decks because of its coloration, um, its adherence to history, and it's just it's just a beautiful feeling deck. Let me just show you the, the they're all really small. They're smaller than tarot sized. This one is pretty much the same size as that. This one's pretty much the same size as the Pablo Robledo deck. And this one, I want to say, is more uh, traditional tarot size. So you can see that there's definitely a difference there. Let's take a look at the Robledo in general. It's a really beautiful deck. Here are the backs. It's got this like old um, parchment paper feel with the colorations. And I wanted to get it in my hands because it was so popular. And this devil is to die for. <laughs> I love that. I love like the embellishments on the devil's legs. Everything about it is so cool. So this one, actually changes were made to the pillars behind the hierophant for La, La Pape, and let's get to the moon card. Where's the moon card? Like a little fish was added here. And also in the world, some changes to the eyes, I believe, were made. Like the, the fifth edition had like enclosed eyes, but if you can see like the bottoms of her eyes are open. So I'm not sure why he decided to make that change, but so there's that one. And the Hodorowski deck is also, it's very, it's quite thin, but not terribly, I mean, not too thin, basically. Here are the backs. I love the Hodorowski deck because of the coloration. 
I love the vibrancy of the color. And like I said, like it just pops for some reason. And then when we get to the minors, you'll see like they're much bigger than, they're bigger on the card than some of the other decks. The CBD is a lot thicker. Here are the backs. But I'm not, I don't really like the coloration. I don't really like the eyes in the CBD very much. The reason why I got it secondhand was because I wanted to do that comparison. The Spanish tarot right here, I got because I love the colors. And I love the faces. Like they just, that some of them are so weird looking. Um, like look at the, <laughs> uh, like if we get to, I love the vibrant yellow and like lime green of the pentacles. It just pops off the card. And this is also not stark white either, which is kind of nice. And for the cups, they're like this red color. I love the shape of the cups. And, and the, from the um, original, this is like a reproduction of, a, of the Spanish tarot, but there's another one that isn't as dark in coloration, but I, I kind of like it this dark. And I like the greens of the wand suit and especially, I love the swords of, oops, the sword, the blues of the swords. Like that is some neon blue. And it just like, it pops with the other colors. And I really like that. And it's really compact. It's really easy to handle. And it's just here are the backs. It's just a nice little deck. The Trionfi de la Luna has this, the muted color tones, and I, and I do love, it, it definitely feels antique to me. I love the differences in the pentacles, like er, they're all different faces. And there's, there is so much symbolism to, to be able to use. And I think I had mentioned it in my last video that I, I like it to have more than just what the card is supposed to mean. And I think that it's really cool to be able to kind of like take some of the embellishments that he's put into the miners and kind of work with that. Like these are empty and this one is full. Um, like these are offset. Some of them are empty. Some of them are full. You have some uh, in the swords, like in the wands, you have like some of, some of the uh, foliage has got teeth and it's very sharp. So you can really draw on a lot regarding that. And some of the, um, the odd numbers in the, in the sword suit have blood. Like why is this one just covered in blood versus this one having like drops of blood? And I really like that. Like, this is so cool. The queen of swords. So she's left like a fire in her wake and look at the uh, flowers in the background they're just like totally wilting as she walks by so she has she has done some damage with her intellect and it's just awesome you know here's the king with the volcano in the background and he's hiding his his misdeeds but he's he's showing um, a clear clean sword so it's like what what is he hiding and the moon is dripping with blood it's just really cool so I've had this the Trion Fidela Luna for some time, but the other ones I, I got recently over the last few months because of my interest in Marseille in general. So the whole point of this is to decide if I need to keep them all. I definitely know for sure, but not by the time I make the rehoming video. I know that I'm going to be rehoming the CBD because it just it just doesn't call to me as much. Like I love the face here in the chariot and I don't like his as much. And he's like, <laughs> he's looking off to the other direction completely. And this one totally goes its own way. 
So let's take a look at, uh, let me just flip this to justice. And let's take a look at some of the minors. The coloration here. So you have these pentacles that are just yellow with this light blue and red. Same thing here with the cups. And those are the wands and here are the swords. And with the Hodorowski deck, I feel like there's there's the with that deep navy blue it adds something and the reason why I want to learn Marseille is because it allows for a lot more of an intuitive interpretation and you can like look at the numer numerology you can look at you know, is the energy expanding or contracting? And you can pick up on like little little things, like why is there a tear or something in that sword? So it's just really cool. I like his face too. Now the other one that's in question now is the Pablo Robledo. I do like it, I think it's really pretty, but it's almost, too dark with that coloration for me. Like I feel like the colors are almost too muted. But the cardstock is lovely and I do love the box. So I am going to have to play with this a little bit more to decide if this is something that I want to keep in my collection or not. So this is the Pablo Robledo 6th edition Harowski Tarot, CBD Marseille, the Spanish Tarot, and Triomphe de la Luna. Next up we have a couple of decks that are in my playing card, like tarot slash playing card category. This is the Keymaster Tarot Ultimate Edition. This is the Playing with Marseille, and this is the Arcana Tarot Playing Cards. Now the Key Master Tarot is one that I saw the Kickstarter video and I just said, wow, that is amazing. I do have a full walkthrough on my channel and I just, I loved the box. Like ugh, if there's a collector in me, this is why I bought this. And it has a little um, ribbon here with a tiny guidebook that for a collector who knows tarot, it's really kind of unnecessary to even have, but of course I'm gonna keep it. There was a bigger book that had like larger pictures and it, it didn't, I went back and forth on that one because it, did, it didn't have enough of an explanation of the imagery to warrant the extra money, but I had to have the deck. And the reason is because of the minors. It has that French and um, Latin pip style, I believe it is. So you have like the, the Marseille type, it, you know, and it's not exact. So if you look at the 10 of swords, it's not, th this is kind of like more of an embellishment. It doesn't really go a traditional way, but it is really, really cool. And the majors are pretty amazing as well. Here are the sides with gold gilded and the backs, which match the back of the box. The Playing Marseille I just got in a trade because I really wanted to explore what was in this book. And I'm glad I did because they just, it just cracks me up. Some of these faces, it's really small. This deck is super, super small. Here are the backs, but that's okay. Um, and the Arcana playing cards are like a traditional, very slippery linen finish. Oh, I separated the majors from the minors because sometimes I like to use this deck for solitaire, but if I if I wanted to take it with me, I could use it as both. So here are some of the majors. Oh, and I edged it in black as well. 
it's really cool. Like the majors are amazing. So this is definitely a deck that, you know, it's definitely a grab and go deck. You can use it for multiple things. You know, you can play with it or you can use it for readings as well. So that makes it really versatile. And I really like that. This actually reminds me of one of the Knight of Cups or Knight of Wands in the Beautiful Rebellion Tarot. Can you see that? That's interesting. But let's get to the hips here. Do I need three playing card tarots? No. You know, because of this whole process, let's zoom in a little. And oop, I'm gonna have to push this up a little bit. I don't really trust the cardstock of the Keymaster Tarot. I, I'm afraid to shuffle the, the gilding off, like I'm afraid to chip it. Um, so I'm going to have to decide if I'm going to keep it for collector purposes only. Look at her face. <laughs> I mean, that's great. She just is not taking any shit whatsoever. And she can see right through you. She can see right through that BS. Uh, here are the backs for the Arcana playing card. So it's not particularly reversible because this uh, this is like a full tree and this is kind of like a bear tree. I, I think that the, the thing that I need to consider again is whether or not I'm going to actually use the deck. What am I waiting for? Someone to like show up and be like, Oh, are you into tarot? Check this out. You know, I'm not really that kind of person. I mean, it would be cool to share that with, but the likelihood of that happening is pretty small in my my circles. Uh, you know, the people that I I am around, they don't really even know that I do tarot. I mean, I have told a few confidants, but and I think I mentioned it in my uh, the behind the channel look that I feel as though I would be judged harshly if I told more people that this is something that I do and that I love and I don't feel like I need I should be hiding it but it's just not it's just something that I I do for myself so let's take a look at the miners. And I showed you the miners in this one. And the courts are really cool too. Here's the jack, the knight, the queen of clubs, and the king. So it's really cool. And the hearts are awesome too. But you know, like I said, I'm I'm probably not going to use it. I will definitely be using this one. I love that that queen of hearts. I just, I think that the exposed chest says a lot about her openness and vulnerability. And it's the only one like that in the deck. So it's really cool. It just, it's so cute and so fun. And I love the, the pips, you know, they do veer from Marseille quite a bit. So it's not like you can look at the foliage and, and see it growing or retreating or dying off or whatever it is that you know is typical of Marseille but the watercolor here uh, I saw on Boy Diviner's channel I saw him his walkthrough he kind of wished that the the washes were the same in the jacks and the clubs as they are in the hearts and the diamonds so if we go to the hearts you can see like the wash of color is like goes from light to dark but it's all dark in the spades and the clubs but I don't, it doesn't, that doesn't bother me. It's just a really cute deck. And I wanted to show you the guidebook and how it kind of talks about numerology. It talks about red and black and the color 
Um, diamonds are our money and ideas. Hearts are our passion. Oops. Hearts are our passions and loved ones. Clubs bring to get people together through work or social gatherings. And spades cut, stab, and dig. So this, here's here's something. The 40 cards, but let's look at numbers like this. So one would be beginnings, two exchanges, and you can see it right here, but it talks about each of the numbers and what they can mean and how you can translate that across the suits. So I really like that. You know, two of, is an exchange. So two of hearts are one cup finds another, two of clubs is a handshake. So the exchange is, is, is the theme, but it, it can be used in different areas of life. The three is growth and loss. So it, it, it has like, so whereas in the RWS, the three of um, swords is like swords piercing the heart and it, and it kind of talks about heartbreak and betrayal. This is about growth, which is different, right? So the three of diamonds is a spark, ideas become interests, money increases. And the three of spades, more cuts, perhaps the work of a skilled craftsman or someone with mal intent. A little poison goes a long way. Even loss has a way of spreading. Which actually does kind of make sense if you were to, you know, take the RWS and, and apply it to playing card. In this one, it doesn't really talk about growth so much as it does about someone who's trying to take advantage of you, which is interesting. So four is security, which makes sense. Five is the physical. Six is to and fro. So you have things going out, things coming back. You have even lines. Seven is discontent. And I really like this. It says the arrangement of the sevens in the playing card deck are the most unsettling. All the other odd numbers have a suit symbol dead center, but the seven has it inexplic inexplicably, inexplicably at the top feels imbalanced it calls for order something's not quite right so that's really cool and the eight is about collectives and you know gatherings and people in general nine is about changes and ten is about endings so that's really awesome and of course you have the traditional playing card what I do like about this one is that it has the heart and the cup so you have that at the same time so here's the diamond and the pentacle the club and the wand and the club and the sword so that's really cool reference there so you don't forget so this is the key master tarot the playing marseille by ryan edward and the arcana playing cards next up is my anima mundi tarot and my nocturna oracle from the same creator megan wireweeden these two are decks that I've had for some time and I have used them, but I wanted to include it here because I wanted to compare it to a deck that has somewhat recently entered my collection, the Oak Ash and Thorn Tarot. And since they're both animal decks, I feel as though I don't need to keep them both and I'm going to be looking at them side by side and I'm going to push these aside and add a couple other decks alongside the Oak Ash and Thorn. So let's take a look. Now the Oak Ash and Thorn tarot, as I mentioned, you know, came out several months ago and I've kind of used it here, you know, at the beginning, I used it a couple times, but I am still getting to know it. I remember when I first pulled it out and I was looking through the cards and I was just so taken by how cute everything was. I, I think that's what drew me in the first place. Let's take a look at the backs real quick. Here's the Oak Ash and Thorn. Here's the Anima Mundi. And the Nocturna. The Nocturna Oracle, I have cut the edging off and re-edged it in this beautiful navy blue that perfectly matches. I love it so much. I wanted to do that same thing with the Enema Mundi, but I feel like the titles are too close to the bottom and I wouldn't be able to cut it without taking off some of the title, which I wanted to keep. The Oak Ash and Thorn Tarot is 
it's a chunk of monk, but it was made with, you know, with recyclable materials, um, earth conscious, and I really enjoy that as well. Now, of course, this is the oracle that accompanies this, and it has a vibe. Sorry, I bumped the camera. It has a vibe about it. If you look at the vibe of this one, it's got these cool tones, and there's a lot of, it doesn't shy away from difficult images. The only human in the deck is in the devil card, which is cool, which definitely says a lot. So it has this like, kind of like twilight vibe, I wanna say, with the way it's colored. Here it is, it's the only human in the deck. And it's, and it's definitely pippish in, in certain ways. Like here's the 10, here's the nine. So you have that growing building of the of the fish here and then you have an entire school of fish in the 10. And at the same time, you know, I have to think about my spacious tarot. So if I'm going to look at something that's pippish, that's the deck that I'm going to choose for that spacious feel. So here's very something very similar to the background that you would see in the spacious tarot. It definitely gives you that that open feeling. So this is a pip, I'm um, sorry, an animal deck, the King of Pentacles, and I get her choices for the animals. But I also have to also think about my Children of Letha Tarot, which is like a humanoid and animal combination deck. So I get the animals from that from that deck as well. And I don't really feel like I want to have that many animal decks in my collection. This is really cool because once you learn about the animal or the plant that's in here, it, you know, it even has like fog. So you have animals and you also have elements of nature as well. And you get it and, it, you know, but it is, it, it does require some study until you internalize what the symbolism of an ocelot would be and what makes the blue morpho so special, which is because it's rare in nature. And then to apply that to the reading, it just takes a little bit of effort and not that it's not worthwhile. It's so cool. Look at this dusk card. I love that badger. So if this is twilight, this would be midnight. And this is just prancing through the forest and meeting all of your forest friends. It has a fairy tale vibe to it. And I really like that. And they're just so adorable. And each suit has the different animals, like the cups have the squirrels and the acorns. And it's very Rider-Waite Smith. The pentacles have the rabbits. The swords have the crows. Just going through it now just reminds me of what it felt like when I first, um, uh, you know, took it out of the box. And the wands have the foxes. It's just so cute. And here are the extra cards of the deck that's now coming out. And I will link information to it, if I remember, in the description box. So it's like more dragon based, but very similar as far as like the layout. And I think that the font is also going to be the same. So these are definitely ones that I am putting side by side because I wanted to get like the vibe from them. So as I mentioned, the Anima Mundi is one that is on the chop chopping block because of the fact that I have this deck, which I really want to explore further, and the Spacious Tarot and the Children of Letha Tarot. Like, this one does kind of combine those vibes a little bit. Look at this, fireflies, that's so pretty. And if I get rid of this one, I feel like I need to get rid of this one because the only ever time I used this was when I ever used this. So this is the Oak, Ash, and Thorn. This is the Enema Mundi and the Nocturna Oracle. I will be keeping this one and adding to it, and I'll take these away.
I have added the Whispering Woods Little Tiny Pocket Oracle by Jessica A. Lay. It's so cute. It's magnetic and it pairs perfectly with this one. This one is the Roots and Wings Oracle and I, this is not new to my collection but I want I held off on showing this because I wanted to pair it with this one and here is the Telluric Runes deck. Here are the backs of those. This is the only rune deck that I have. Now I know that the Telluric Tarot is now on Kickstarter. Um, I'm holding off on that one because the first edition didn't really have enough of an indication of what the card was for me to want to dive into it. This one does not have any edging and I like it. It's got a kind of a sheen to it and I want to say that this second edition of the Telluric Tarot is gilded and glossy. So it's going to be a completely different feel from this deck and it's also that's definitely a study deck this one is just the runes and it's the only runes deck that i have so i, I do want to keep it in my collection i do have a set of adventuring runes that i kind of pair with it but and it also pairs well with my lily white tarot because of the white space and the use of watercolor these two are paired, the, a lot of people pair these together because of that white space and because of the font, like it just kind of matches. This little Whispering Woods has like almost all the animals that are in the deck on the backs. And so it's like a perfect match. And all of the, all of the words here kind of bring you into that woodland feel. Like everything can be accomplished at nature's pace. An idea like a single acorn can start a wondrous forest. It, it just kind of has that, it, it has like a fairy tale vibe to it as well. Learn to grow wherever you are planted. Remember your roots. Be like the woods, calm, soothing, mysterious, and full of life. Now this feels to me as I go through it more of an affirmation deck. Learn, take a lesson from the owls, deeply observe the night, and you'll become a little wiser in the day. But I think the key words themselves, like patience, uncertainty, it has light and shadow in it. So I can take the word all by itself and kind of pull that into the meaning of the card. Now the Roots and Wings Oracle here are the backs and it's got a rose petal finish. I don't mind it, a lot of people don't like it. Um, pairs well with lots of different decks. I also like to use it with my Lily White Tarot as well because of that white space. This is less about the watercolor and it's got kind of a, um, like a stretched warped kind of style to it. Like these fingers being pretty long and some of the figures are drawn. This would pair super well with the Mesquite Tarot, which I don't have. Um, but the keywords are just so great. A lot of them actually tie back to the majors in Tarot and like here we are, the Hermit and Crafty. So it's really cool. We have the bunnies, can bring in all of that energy. So I don't think that these are going to be ones that I'm going to be considering rehoming, but not sure about that yet. And I will give an explanation of the decks that I do decide to rehome and which ones actually made it. Um, I won't talk about all my decks that made it, but which ones that were kind of iffy that ended up staying in my collection and why. So this is the Oak Ash and Thorn. This is the Roots and Wings Oracle. And this is the Telluric Runes as well as the Whispering Woods. I did also want to mention that the Oak Ash and Thorn is great for like grounding readings and like when I go out to the woods with my oums and um, you know the decks that have like the trees in there this is also a really great tarot to bring along to kind of connect with the nicer side of nature I guess you could say like the more like mother earth nature can be really wild and really chaotic sometimes and beautiful in that aspect but this one is all about 
like the abundance that nature can can provide and the the coloration also is very brown and earthy and I really enjoy that next up is Madame Andorra's fortune cards I got this second hand I try to buy the decks that you know I'm not like head over heels about I'm not sure about yet second hand as much as possible uh, you know on my wish list because I wanted to get I didn't want to spend too much money on acquiring them and these are definitely fortune style cards about what will happen in the future and as I mentioned in previous videos that isn't really something that I tend to do a lot of and the readings that I've had with the cards were kind of hit and miss like I felt like it was too specific about what will happen and what are the energies that are that are going on around me um, but I have to say that the book is phenomenal so let's take a look at the book before we go into the cards the book obviously goes into the cards themselves talks about the symbolism that you see um, which is pretty cool this guidebook has oracle spreads it's got information about the um, astrology the houses the signs the runes like it's got everything talks about the symbolism more of what you'll see it talks about um like palmistry like bone casting how cool is that the philosopher's stone elements um alchemy elements and minerals it's got like everything in here your know, horoscope just awesome so I don't know. I edged them in black. Here are the backs. The cardstock, you know, had a little bit of chipping, just very slight, but with the with the edging, it kind of took care of that right away. And I just think it would be so cool, like a new relationship blossoms. Like I'm married, so <laughs> I mean a friendship, but we have the queen, love and prosperity. I love that Egyptian reference, revelry and indulgence. So I guess my my readings with this hasn't been like earth shattering. So the card usage doesn't really do much for me, but the book does. So I'm going to have to give this another look see and see if it will give me better readings. Next up, we have the Spread Machine Cards and Oracle with the Change um, add-on pack. I didn't choose, there was another add-on pack, Quest. I didn't do that one because I wasn't sure if I was going to like like the um, gaming type of vibe. Uh, Lisa Pepez over at Supportive Tarot has a great walkthrough of all three of these decks. And I actually watched it several times to kind of see if I wanted to order the Quest after all. But... I think I'm okay with these. Plus, what I ended up doing was taking both of these cards and combining them so that it would be in just one spot for me. Um, this is like the leftover cards. And like you can see that I kind of took some of the the big pack and some of the, the smaller change pack and kind of added them. So what I did was I went through and I tried to see if there were any repeating uh, energies and I put the ones that I liked more in this one and I took out the guidebook so that I would have it all in one spot. We're gonna go ahead and zoom in here. Here we go. Now this one actually works really well as just an oracle by itself and because of the colors and because of its simplicity it works with so many decks. It all it it would be great to pair with the light seers, which I actually should have paired with it as well, but I didn't. Um, and just any deck that has lots of color, it's just great. And even by itself to use as with spread crafting, um, is perfect. And it give you it gives you like definitive meanings of or like where's the energy that you should be focusing on 
So I've used it a couple times as just a straight up oracle and it really was pretty awesome. And it leaves you open to interpret the meaning on your own. And it's got beautiful cardstock. It's edged in like this, the bigger pack, the cards and Oracle is edged in this like pretty purple and the change is edged in, I don't know if you can see that in silver. So we're gonna take a look at a few more. And if you wanna see walkthroughs of any of the decks that I'm showing, this is just kind of a preliminary just to get a feel for what these cards can do and just the general vibe that they have. It's got a beautiful matte card stock. So this one will be staying in my collection because I don't have a ton of oracles and oracles tend to be the decks that I end up rehoming the most because I tend not to reach for them as much. I think maybe it's because I use that whole undercard thing. Like I, I look at the undercard of the deck and that's kind of my oracle that, that gives me like the basis of the reading. Um, and I don't wanna complicate things too much. And I have to have oracles that go well with multiple decks. If it's so specific it will, and, and it doesn't really match anything else, it's not and it tends not to be something that will stay in my collection. So this is the Spread Machines Cards and Oracle, beautiful um, magnetic box, sturdy with the change add-on combined. Next are the Illuminated Earth Oracle and the Faceted Garden Oracle. This is by Claire Mac, 2018, and the Faceted Garden came out in 2020 by Claire Mac as well. Now these two I haven't worked with that much and we'll take a look at why. The Illuminated Earth Oracle is very abstract. I have edged it in gold and here are the backs. Beautiful matte cardstock. So is this. Here are the backs. And this one has a holographic shiny gilding. I was kind of disappointed that they didn't actually end up being the same size because I wanted to kind of combine them. So they're really not. And it was kind of like a fluke. Some of them actually did come as the same size. Um, I don't know, I, that kind of like really bummed me out. And the Illuminated Earth Oracle is a deck that lots of people find the openness of the keywords really, really um, awesome for intuitive hits. And I can agree with that. But this has such a, a grounding energy. It isn't one that I reach for, um, like when it comes to like earth readings, I, I tend to use the uh, uh, majestic earth and my touchstone tarot combination and those other decks with the trees for that kind of earth element. And since I kind of already bonded with those pairings, I really never reached for this when it came to um, like fall time frame, which is when I would tend to use it. I do like the faceted garden. I, I thought I would want to use it more for springtime and this would be like more fall, uh, but I really didn't use it yet this season because I have those other springtime decks like my Guardian Tarot, the Mystic Moments Tarot, and Oracle now that I have. Those were the, the decks that I used for spring. And I'm not, I just, I'm, I guess maybe it's the keywords that I, I think I have to like reach for 
And I know that the mystical moments tarot kind of has that same element to it that it's like difficult to get a feel for what the card means without looking in the guidebook. But like anguish, that's obvious, like what that means. And pillar, obviously this is like about coming up and maybe getting a magnifying glass and taking a look at a smaller detail get and then at the same time balancing that with a higher perspective. You know, with my last video, I kind of went through the decks beforehand and really solidified what I was thinking and feeling. And this one, I haven't actually pulled these out in quite some time. So resistance, like I get that. There's something within me that's resisting change. And scarecrow, so fe being felt, like feeling like you're put out there for a purpose that you may not resonate with. Um, and, and feeling like things are like moving away from you and you want to draw things in. Um, I get that. Relationship, relationships can be quite confrontational, can't they? But I gotta, I gotta tell you that I'm just not being drawn to these two for whatever reason. And again, I do want to do some more readings with these to kind of see if I can develop that bond. And if not, then you'll be seeing these again. Let's take a look at a couple more cards. And it has the energy, like Tempest. Like you get that like electric, just explosive feeling there. Um, but I guess I, I'm, I'm not, other than like the lightning, I'm not feeling the triangle here. Like I don't know what that has to do with anything in the circle here um, with the energy. So, and I do have the Phenomenon Oracle that I backed on Kickstarter recently that has a lot of the same ideas with um, you know, different energies in nature. Like I get this connection. You get the, the land and the, and the sea kind of coming together and you have these two circles overlapping. So I get that, you know, entropy. Things are kind of decaying, but with the snake, you know, you're finding a new way around an obstacle. And I know that a lot of people find this deck to be like their go-to workhorse for oracles. And I think maybe that's what's also keeping it in my collection as well because so many people love it. And I'm like, well, then I must find a way to love it too. But then obviously once you draw awareness to that, it's like, no, it, I don't have to love it too. We're all individuals. And we can all figure out our own energetic desires. So this is the Illuminated Earth Oracle and the Faceted Garden Oracle by Claire Mack. Okay, guys, we're going to make this in one video. Whew. These are the last three. These are a little bit of um, outliers, and they have absolutely nothing to do with each other. And we're just going to kind of throw them in there and see what they do and all that good stuff. Okay, so the Sacred Destiny Oracle is like a fantasy oracle. Here are the backs, beautiful backs. Lovely Hay House matte cardstock, love it. The Hush Tarot is definitely like a dystopian earthy feel. Here are the, the backs there. But as I mentioned in previous videos, the Hush Tarot is what I use to pair with my um, Pagan Otherworlds and I use it as an oracle. So I definitely don't use it as a tarot and it actually really worked. The colors, the, the um, it, it just has like a clarifying vibe for whatever reason, it, it pairs beautifully with the simplicity of the pagan other worlds and I've really enjoyed working with it in that way. I enjoy the guidebook for the sacred destiny. And if we take a look at the images like some of them are more like natural landscapes and some of them are more collagey um 
fantasy kind of like that's definitely like a fantasy um and that's so cute so it's kind of like it bounces around a little bit and i don't know why i haven't chopped off these borders yet because it would totally still work new beginnings i love the keywords thriving but i'm not sure right now if there's something in my collection that i have that i would want to pair it with it would go really well with the majestic earth tarot which i have paired it with so i might want to keep it for that so i might do another reading with my majestic earth tarot which i'm obviously keeping and pair it with this and see how it, how it will, how it does um it definitely has you know like it livens it up a bit like the majestic earth tarot is very sophisticated that you have these landscape portraits it's very serious you know and then you have this like not real uh, oasis basically so it's kind of it's it's definitely has a a change in the vibe there so we'll see if that's something that i would like to do with the majestic earth so the chakra deck chakra love deck here are the backs and it's got different um like gemstones and different keywords that you that you can pair and the backs are all different and, and it matches the gemstone that it's referring to so it's pretty cool and I like it, I like it for that. And it's very open. This would also pair really well with um, anything that has lots of different colors. It's got lots of white space, you know, pairing it with the Roots and Wings Oracle would be a really great one or the Change uh, um, Spread Machine would also be pretty cool. And I don't have all of these, these, um, I have many of them these gemstones but i don't have all of them so i'm not sure if like looking at the back would help me connect to smoky quartz as much as actually getting a hold of the gemstone itself and working with the energy directly so i'm gonna have to see if this is something that i even really want to keep in my collection and oh and it has like chakras which is awesome um like I just had an idea for future videos. I didn't just have it, but I had an idea of something that I might be able to use this deck for it. So this this might be something I want to keep depending on um, like how that idea manifests. So this is the Chakra Love deck. Let's take a look at a few more cards before we call it a day on this video. What do you think of these decks? Do you have any of them? How does the Hush Tower work for you? I know a lot of them, a lot of them stray. And this is definitely one that I considered like relabeling, kind of like how I did with my Guardian Tarot. But with the way that the symbols are like on the top and the numbers or the, um, the words are on the bottom, I'm not sure that that would work because I would want to have the freedom to switch it around from like pentacles to cups or something like this is the three of pentacles but i feel like this would be better for the three of cups no you know you have the three birds and you have a large cup like why wouldn't this be the three of, of cups i don't know and that's kind of like that's why i limit its use to an oracle because that would like just annoy me <laughs> if i had to like translate it like that um as a tarot so whew, that was that was a long one guys so thank you for sticking with me so this is the sacred destiny oracle the hush tarot and the chakra love oracle deck so thank you so much for joining me for the final part of decks that i'm getting to know Next, we will have decks that I'll be rehoming. And again, I don't know how many parts that will be, but thank you so much for joining me. Have you had a chance to take a look at some of these decks? Do you have any of these decks? Do you have Marseille decks? How many do you have? How many do you think is even necessary to have of a specific type 
um, in your collection. What do you think? What are your thoughts? I'd love to hear them in the, in the comments below. So thanks for hanging out with me today and have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye. As always, thanks for watching, and if you found value in this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more tarot-related content like this. Ring that bell to be notified whenever I upload new stuff. And don't forget to listen closely to the whispers of the heathen within that already has the answer and knows the path that's right for you. Until next time, be brave, be bold, be you. Bye.